Kathy Wood of ARK Invest went up against a grizzly bear, losing more than $200 million in the struggle and learning the lesson of what to do when your stocks drop. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with your weekly market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning with the stocks to watch and the market news you need to see. I'll detail that stock that went wrong for Wood, but more importantly, what you can do when a stock you own plunges or comes under a short attack. Stick around after that, we'll do our stock market update with the stocks I'm watching this week, including what could be some very good news for GameStop and Walgreens and how to invest. But first, all you out there in the nation know real estate will always be a special place in my portfolio. I started out as a commercial property analyst and no other asset class has created as much legacy wealth as real estate. But nearly every side of the real estate market has been crushed on higher interest rates. Real estate stocks were barely up last year and down 25% the year before. In fact, right now, the only safe place in real estate seems to be the single family rentals. For that reason, I'm investing through the Arrived Homes platform instead. Instead of investing in a fund of properties, you get to invest directly in the individual homes. Each investment is a separate LLC, so you have a direct investment. You earn dividends on the rental income paid out every quarter with dividends from 3 to 8% on rent and then price appreciation when the property is sold. Upside price returns have been as high as 136% and usually over five to seven years. I know you have a lot of questions. I know I did before I started investing, so I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to the platform. One thing, the homes available for investment sell out fast, so make sure you click through and get on the notification list. I missed out on a lot of good properties for not being on that notice list, so look for the link below in the description or just scan the QR code here. Back to our main topic though, Kathy Wood and ARK Invest built a stake of more than $220 million in two simple holdings after its April 2021 IPO that saw shares rise to over $60 a share. The autonomous tech company was trying to be the first to develop a self-driving system for commercial trucking, an industry that could have been worth tens of billions of dollars. But shares plunged when New York-based short seller firm Grizzly released a report in August 2021, crashing the stock to $30 each, though it did snap back to $50 when Wood and ARK Invest doubled down to buy more. Grizzly accused TSP of systematically lying and misrepresenting key information about the company and the technology, including refundable revenue, customers posting no deposit on orders, and founders with a long history of failures and bankruptcies. Finally selling out of the position late 2022 at around $2 a share had an estimated loss of $200 million. Wood told Bloomberg in an interview that ARK sold because of the departure of its founding CEO, the technology visionary of the company, and saying that while Grizzly got the stock direction right, not for the right reasons. Now, for its part, Too Simple blamed the stock price on a mix of managerial issues and difficulty in developing that autonomous technology. The company has since delisted from the U.S. market and is refocusing on the Asia-Pacific region. Now, folks, investing in new and disruptive technology, as ARK is known for, is always going to be extremely risky, and there will be total losses in some cases. It's very much like the companies I used to look at as a venture capital analyst, those unprofitable but growing companies set to change the world. And you see that picture here in research by Willamette of venture investments. You see that even those placed by professional analysts, more than five in 10 companies produce a return of less than the initial investment, less than one X, and many return nothing. It's only these 10 and 20 and even 30 times returns that balance out the portfolio for a solid overall returns. So if you are gonna be investing in these kinds of new, fast-growing companies like autonomous driving, artificial intelligence, and space exploration, you need to be ready for these kinds of big drops in a stock and need to know how to react. First is to honestly review the bear case against a stock. Now, this should be done before you buy a stock, seeking out that other side of the analysis to develop a whole view of the risks. Even more though, after you buy a stock though, we tend to fall into that confirmation bias where we only look at research that confirms our outlook on a stock and just downplay any bad news. Hell, I've even seen comments on videos when I present the downside case where, where an investor complains that if everyone would just stop saying negative things about a stock, the price would keep going up, as if that's how investing really worked. Nation, I know it sucks to see a stock you own fall, but you cannot shut out the factual and thoughtful analysis just because it says something you don't like. Look for the bear case, use it to review and question your thesis in a stock and make a better informed decision. Now, in that reason for a stock's drop, ask yourself if it's something fixable or a structural, cultural problem within the company. Now, a fast growing company can rebound from a missed quarter of sales. A company facing charges of fraud or a loss of critical management 
could have that structural problem that is unfixable. From there, it's time to check the company's cash flow and debt for an idea of survivability while it grows itself out of this crisis. Cash is like oxygen for those small, fast-growing companies. As long as it has enough cash, it can survive. For this, pay attention to the cash flow from operations, that's CFO, and the cash from investing on the statement of cash flows. Now, that cash flow from operations is usually negative for these small, startup-type companies, and investing cash flow is further negative, but the company can survive if it has enough of that balance sheet cash to pay for a year or, or until it can reach a funding milestone. Debt will build under these circumstances, but if it's not payable or maturing over the next few years, that could give the company time to grow. As with all penny stocks and growth stocks, you also want to revisit the company's competitive advantage and its growth. Does it really have something that sets it apart from its competitors? Uh, how is its revenue growth versus its peers? And is it taking that market share in the industry or basically just another also rand? Now, I revealed my favorite measure for these types of stocks in a video a couple of weeks ago, the rule of 40, where you add up the revenue growth plus the earnings margin, the EBITDA margin. Companies that are able to post an above 40 level on this, so revenue growth plus EBITDA margin of over 40, are set to create long-term value. From these questions, you should get a better view of whether to sell the stock or even buy more. If nothing else, the time to research these questions is going to help you avoid any knee-jerk reactions that you will regret later. Now, if you do sell, it doesn't mean you have to sell your entire stake. You could cut the position, taking a tax loss on part of it while still holding on to some for a potential rebound, but avoiding those larger losses. Similarly, if you decide to double down and buy more, it doesn't mean you have to literally double the position all at once. Plan to leg into new shares over the next three to six months where maybe you buy another third more of your position now, but then re the rest over the next three or four more buys. This is going to take advantage of that sudden drop in the price and dollar cost your average lower, but it's also going to avoid those steep losses if the stock continues to fall. On to the stocks I'm watching this week. First up, Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker WBA, reports earnings Thursday with investors waiting on news around any potential spinoffs or asset sales. Shares have continued lower this year, but I expect it could get a very strong boost as the company announces significant changes, selling many of its non-core assets and possibly even larger sales. Shares trade for just six times this year's expected earnings and are very attractive on an enterprise to revenue basis as well. The only overhang here is its $34 billion in debt owed, paying off of which will be a key part of those asset sales. GameStop, ticker GME, reports earnings Tuesday and seems to have lost some of its meme stock status with shares down 27% from the beginning of the year. There could be a nice surprise for investors Tuesday though. It's been 12 weeks since the company announced that CEO Ryan Cohen was allowed to start investing the company's balance sheet cash into equities. Now, while equities may not be a part of that Q4 earnings reported, the stock market is up 12% since that and management might highlight the windfall profits on its cash. Earnings are expected at 29 cents a share, almost double last year's quarter, but the company is expected to see revenue deteriorate at 6% a year this year and next. An investing windfall could be enough, though, to shake out some of the short sellers and, and have investors talking about this stock once again. Soundhound AI, ticker SOUN, is down hard from its recent peak of $10 a share, but still up 62% since recommending it in mid-February at $3.77. Now, I like it at this level, and I'm adding more shares to my position, though also selling some covered calls against the new shares to lower my cost further. Selling the January 2025 $10 strike calls for $1.40 each lowers my cost to just $4.74 a share. And that gives me a further 23% discount, but still a 110% upside to that strike price. Showing you the bigger picture here with the Sector Spiders Sector Tracker, great free resource on the internet. 10 of the 11 stock sectors did rise last week, with real estate being the only group to see closing lower. Now, shares of FedEx jumped 12% on the week following a strong earnings report, with the logistics company offering a good sign for the overall economic growth. Just under 400 of the 500 stocks in the S&P 500 index did rise for the week. That's a good sign for breath across the sectors. Now, the real estate sector wasn't quite as bad as it seemed, though, with 20 of the 31 real estate stocks in the sector rising higher. It was only that the three largest, Prologis, American Tower, and Equinix, all three fell and just dragged that sector lower because of their sector weightings. Data centers, Equinix, and Digital Realty fell on the week, but after strong gains of 12% for the year and 30 to 50% over the last year, I think this is mostly just profit taking, so data centers are still going to be a good opportunity here. Cell Tower stocks, American Tower, and Crown Castle also fell last week, but 
are at good valuations on lagging performance over the last year. Check out Arrived Homes, how I'm investing in real estate right now, and get on the notification list for new properties with the link below. You'll get dividends up to 8% a year and strong property appreciation, so make sure you check that out. Or click on the video to the right for how I'm investing $1,000 for dividend income every week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.